Hi guys. I know I usually don't talk about football, but I really, really wanted to talk about it today. And I do want to say that secretly, I've been doing a podcast recently. I'm going to leave the link in the description down below to the channel. It's called Ya 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 Football, where we talk about all football, Premier League, Serie A, La Liga, all the leagues, everything going on, transfers, all that stuff. It's just a normal football podcast that I do with one of my best friends, Fito. He basically runs the entire channel. It's his podcast. I kind of just guest on. I'm like the, the color analyst, basically. Um, so please, please please if you are a football fan go check that out uh subscribe to that channel I no one is subscribed I've never shared it so subscribe so go click the link in the description okay click the damn link and go sub just press the subscribe button I haven't told him that I'm actually like letting you guys like know about it so it would be really really fun just to see his reaction just see the subscriber count just go up and up and up so even if you don't watch football or anything everyone that watches this video I don't care if you like this video or not or subscribe to my channel or not just go subscribe to that podcast, well, YouTube channel slash podcast. Uh, and if you want, listen to uh, the Ya 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 Football Podcast. We do episodes that go up basically every Monday. So uh, now let's talk about it. Manchester United. You guys know me. I'm a big football fan. And uh, I watched, I'm a massive Arsenal fan. As you guys know, you the little, you know, we've got the dog right there. We got the logo on the, on the chair. But... After I watched Arsenal win their second game of the season, uh, we, I watched Manchester United. Now, I think everyone knows Manchester United are in a shambles. They, you know, they are just in a really bad state right now. Massive football club that have been uh, declining and declining and declining. But most experts, you know, we come into today and it's like, it's Brentford. You know, Manchester United will be Brentford. But if you go listen to the bod podcast, me and Fito literally were talking about and I specifically said, it's not Liverpool that worries me. Like, of course, United could get battered by Liverpool. We can all predict United would lose to Liverpool. It's not that game I care about. It's this. It's the Crystal Palace game. It's the Brentford game. It's the Brighton game. It's the Wolves, Southampton. You know, it's these types of games. Leicester City. Uh, these types of games. West Ham. The mid-table teams are just ripping apart Manchester United at the moment. They lose their seventh straight away game dating back to last season. Eric Tunhog, the new manager, has no nothing at his disposal, honestly. He did sign Lissandro Martinez, uh, you know, who got struggled today and got subbed off at halftime, but everyone struggled today. This is a product or a club that you can clearly see. There's no confidence. The belief is gone. Everyone's more, more like the morale of the club is, is rock bottom. If it wasn't rock bottom before... It's rock bottom. Even if they get absolutely demolished by Liverpool next weekend, which most people predict they would, that's not rock bottom. This is. You can you can go into the Liverpool game and and predict a loss, three straight losses, uh, bottom of the table. I know a club that did that just 12 months ago. It was Arsenal Football Club. But the difference is very, very clear. Arsenal had COVID cases. They, they were playing Kolasinac and all these players they didn't want. And they, their new players weren't even playing for them yet. They had no striker. And, and then they had Chelsea and Manchester City, the previous European champions. And then the best team in the world in Manchester City. So that's, you know, let them losing their first three games of the season with those circumstances was not... It's too surprising. I mean, you could easily say Arsenal can lose to City and, and Chelsea. Manchester United, this is their team. That's the biggest difference right here, is that this is their team. Right now, this is what they have. And whatever signings they make until the end of the window, this team is not going to be much different on September 1st. You can't, from August 13th to August 31st, sign four to five players. You can't because there, and this is, might be a very long video as I jump from topic to topic. In 20 days or even less, and in, in 18 days, you simply cannot put out a strategy to bring in the right players that you need. They hire Eric Ten Hag last season before the season ended. At that moment, there should have been a transfer strategy and a plan to to what Ten Hag wanted to do. How does he want to play? What does what, what does he want to do? What kind of players does he want? And they had to make sure that they looked for those types of players who were young and hungry. Instead, they have signed... Well, and, you know, to be fair, Malaysia, the, the left back, he's actually not half bad. He's the one player I see on the pitch screaming, giving directions, holding other players accountable. Because he's been at the club for less than a few months, and he is seeing how 
messed up it is. He's one of the vocal ones. I actually like that signing. Lissandro Martinez, he's quiet. Not he hasn't really been able to say much. But again, he's he's adapting to a new league. But this whole there there was no transfer strategy essentially to start. They looked at Ajax players. They're trying to go after Frankie de Jong at Barcelona, who doesn't even want to go to them, and they're still he- just wanting to do that. The one thing about Manchester United is that they need the leadership, and that is what they don't have. I, I thought Eric Ten Hag might be able to do it, but he can't do it himself. He cannot simply be manager, director, scout, technical. He can't do everything. The days of doing everything, like a Sir uh, Alex Ferguson or an Arsene Wenger, that's not how it works anymore. Even Pep Guardiola has his higher-ups that help him, that help Pep just focus on managing the club. It, it, they, he, Pep isn't going out there scouting at certain players trying to figure out who to sign seven months in the future. No, no, he's focusing on the here and now. They have other people doing that job. You can't get Eric Ten Hag to do everything, which is why you have to look higher up. You have to look at the higher ups of him, of Manchester United, the ownership, the directors, the, te- the technical directors, sporting directors, the scouting department. It's all an absolute mess. And right now it starts at the very top. The Glazers, the owners, they either have to A, sell the club, or B, find find a strategy to put the right people in place and give them the necessary tools to go and achieve whatever they want to achieve. You can't say Manchester United haven't spent money. They've spent over a billion dollars in the last 10 years. They've spent more than anybody else. It's not money. It's the direction. It's the scouting. It's that. And that and I'm not saying you can't blame the Glazers. I think they heard there's a lot of blame to start the Glazers. What you can blame them for for them is not understanding football enough to understand who to put in charge. Because if you own a club, you put the people, the executives in charge. It's the Glazers who make that appointment. It's the Glazers who are on the board and they have to decide who is going to run their club for them. That is where it starts. So they take a lot of the blame as well as the directors. But if the directors aren't doing the job, which they aren't right now, then the Glazers have to fire them if they don't want to sell. They have to fire them and find new directors, find people that know what to do and how to run a football club of this magnitude. If that can't happen, then they need to sell. Because I'm telling you guys right now, Manchester United fans, it's only going to get worse. You're going to lose to Liverpool next weekend. But again, the difference between Arsenal last season losing the first three games and Manchester United this season most likely losing the first three games is that this is Manchester United's teams. A team. There's no COVID cases involved. There's no injuries involved. Varane is there. Ronaldo's there. Bruno is there. Rashford, Sancho, Maguire, everyone, the whole team, the whole squad is there. There's no Tomiyasu coming in or an Odegaard coming in or Ramsdale coming in as a new goalkeeper, which we have to talk about that David De Gea. Again, if you want to play the way Ten Hag wants to play, David De Gea can't be your goalkeeper. You can't just say he's been the best player at the club for the last seven years. He can't play from the back. I'm not looking at his mistake today. I don't care about his mistake today. The second goal is more telling. He can't play from the back. We've known this for years. So it doesn't matter how good of a shot stopper you are. You cannot be a top club in modern day with a manager like Ten Hag knowing how he wants to play you need to change the goalkeeper right away. That has to be one of the... Every, Manchester United, like, we got to change the midfield. We got to do this. We got to do that. You got to get a goalkeeper that can actually start the play from the back. Because if I trust me, I know how Ajax play. I know Eric Ten Hag's philosophy, the 4-3-3. I understand it. He wants to play from the back. And if you don't have a goalkeeper who can't play from the back, you're essentially playing with 10 men. Because goalkeepers in the top teams nowadays are the 11th man. They are the outfielder. They are able to ping passes and play from the back and take the pressure, which De Gea cannot do. He can't make the decisions. So unfortunately for De Gea, who's been at the club for so long and is one of their best players, he is not capable of what Manchester United need in the future. And that is one of the biggest things right now is you have to focus on the future. Forget Ronaldo. Forget Bruno. Forget every all these stars, the superstars. Marcus Rashford, who's 25 years old now. He's not 18 anymore. De Gea as well, Harry Maguire, these guys got to go. You have to come to the realization that none of these players are going to be there when Manchester United are winning football games and competing for titles again, which will one day probably happen, but it's going to take a very, very long time. And the quicker that the club come to the realization that they need to wipe it clean and it will take years to do. So if, if, let's say, they can't do much in this transfer window, January is the start. What is the start? 
get rid of Deadwood. Get players up from the academy. Figure out a long-term plan. You will suffer in the short term. You will be out of Europe. You'll be in Europa League. You'll be hard to make Champions League for two, three, four years. But that is what is necessary to do the rebuild that is needed at Manchester United. It needs hundreds of millions of dollars. It needs competent directors and executives making decisions on players that fit a certain system and how to play. And if Eric Ten Hag is going to be the manager to lead that rebuild, which I think he should be, then you need to follow his system, understand the players that he wants, and find players that will fit his system, whether it be great value around Europe, young players from 18 to 23, and find that. Find players who are hungry. Find players who want to prove themselves. You don't want to be signing Christian Eriksen on a free at 32, 33 years old, whatever he is, because that is not long-term planning. There is no short-term anymore. The short-term's done. For the goal of Manchester United, you're supposed to be winning Premier League titles and competing competing in the Champions League. That short-term goal as of this moment is unrealistic. So you need to focus on the long-term plan. So what fans can do, I think fans need to be really vocal. I think at the Liverpool game, whether it's walkouts or whatever, but the point of the matter here is that there has to be some sort of leadership at this football club. Because if it doesn't happen, I kid you not, Manchester United can permanently be out of the top top five, top six. It, it can happen. Especially in modern day. Kids uh, kids growing up today don't understand David Beckham and Neville and, and Giggs and all this stuff. That was 25, 30 years ago. That's not... Today, Manchester City is the standard. Ten years from now, people are going to look at Manchester City as the standard. When you look at the best club in Manchester... It's Manchester City. It is not Manchester United. No matter how much history is at that club, no matter how many great players and all that is at that club, that's irrelevant now. It's irrelevant. It is time to be humble. It is time to understand what has gone wrong and stop the bleeding. You guys are literally bleeding out right now. They're bleeding out. No joke. I expect Manchester United to finish in the bottom half of the table because, again, who are you going to sign in 18 days, in 18 days with this squad, who are you going to sign to improve the team? Ten Hag is not a magic man. He cannot make all 11 of these players miraculously play amazingly and finish in the top four or even the top six. Because McTominay, Fred, Maguire, Delo, Shaw, none of these players deserve to play for Manchester United. And the quicker you get to that realization, the quicker you can get into a fix and figure out a plan for the future. So is that going to happen? That's the question. As an Arsenal fan, I kind of sit back and I laugh. I was laughing today. But when, as, an, as an actual football fan, when I look at the situation, I've seen, I've seen Liverpool go through this. Remember when Liverpool... 30 years without a title. Yes, they were winning Champions League in 2005, but they were struggling. They were finishing sixth. They were fin finishing seventh. Liverpool, 10 years ago, were not what Liverpool are today. Remember AC Milan, the fall from grace for AC Milan, many years. They just won the title, but it took them a long time to get back. Arsenal. Arsenal, the most recent club to go through this. Again, finished eighth back-to-back -back years, out of Europe, going through managers, and it took them... And it's still going on two, three, four, five years since Wenger left to finally get their feet. Wenger left at, what is it, the end of 2017? That was over five years ago. And they're just now getting back on track. They are, they're not even in the Champions League yet. It took them five, six years out of the Champions League. This, this is what happens when you don't fix a lingering issue in the club. It bleeds. And it's going to take a very long time. Don't forget about all the, the title and Premier Leagues and Champions League. Forget that nonsense for now. You got to focus on the process and you got to enjoy trying to rebuild the club and get happiness back in the fans and the club and the players. You got to get your club back. That's the most important thing. Owners have to do that. Executives have to do that. The manager has to try to rally the players and the players have to fight. And if they don't want to fight and they don't want to be there, then someone has to take some responsibility and get them out any way possible. Termination of contracts, loan them out, whatever you can. Just get them out and get players in. Focus on your academy. Focus on your academy. Academies are so vital in football. 
Focus on young players that might be able to come and help you who understand Manchester United DNA and might be able to come into the first team and, and provide that hunger and that spark that you need. All these different facets, all these different angles from, from the scouting department finding the right players, from the academy bringing in young players, from the, the whole club from within developing the players they have in the club. The infrastructure, the stadium needs to be upgraded. That's on the owners. That's on the Glazers. Will you upgrade the stadium? If not, you got to go. You got to go. You got to get someone who loves Manchester United, has a, is basically a multi-billionaire with a consortium, and make those changes. So do you see how big this job is? Look at the entire tree. Look at the entire tree. All the branches that come out of the tree. All these things that have to be done for a rebuild. And understand how long it's going to take. It's going to take an incredibly long time. A lot of patience. A lot of hard work. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Happy, happy moments, sad moments, frustration, protests, anger, players getting abused. All this stuff is going to happen. It's been happening, but it's going to be even elevated. The media is going to attack. But as a club, Manchester United, players, fans, executives, owners, what are you going to do about it? Are you actually going to try and save your club? Or are you going to let it dwindle down? Because guess what? In the modern day with Manchester City and Liverpool and now Tottenham with their brand new stadium and Arsenal on the bat on the rise, do you know how hard it will be to get back to what you were, which was Manchester United winning leagues year in, year out, and also winning Champions Leagues? It'll probably never happen to that level, but we're seeing Manchester City do it right now. They won four of the last five Premier Leagues. They haven't won the Champions League yet, but they've been dominating England from domestic trophies and, and the domestic league. Manchester City are doing what Manchester United were doing 15 years ago. So it's just switched. Now, how are you going to come back? For Manchester City, it took them uh, new owners, a bill, uh, 1.5 billion investments, and competence at the top, plus the 1.5 billion of investments, to go from a low-level club to one of the most elite clubs in Europe. Manchester United are falling. And they're falling. They're not an elite club. They haven't been an elite club for the last decade. So they're going to keep falling and falling and falling. And how is it going to come back? You got the money, but you need a lot of other things. And that and it's going to take a, it's going to take a very long time. That's going to be it for me, guys. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of Manchester United. And please, please, please click the link in the description below and go follow that channel. Yeah, 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 football. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the NASCAR race review. We'll go back to NASCAR. And for all my Manchester United fans, if you want to come join us, come join us right here. Arsenal, do you want to join right here, baby? Come come on. Come on. We got Jesus. We got Saka. We got Odegaard. We got Saliba. We, we, we got a young and hungry team that want to play football. If you... If you want to come along, come along. It's okay. It's okay. All right. I'll, I'll bring. It's okay. any any questions. Ask me. I'll turn you into an Arsenal fan right away. Take care of yourselves. Say goodbye to the dog. Take care of yourselves. Peace out.